Hey, welcome back to Pop Culture Graveyard. I am Hollis, and today I'm going to talk about one of my all-time favorite British punk bands, Buzzcocks. That's right, it's Buzzcocks, not The Buzzcocks. But if you want to call them The Buzzcocks, the band totally understands. I have loved Buzzcocks ever since I was about 12 years old. How did I first hear Buzzcocks music? In the teenage sex comedy, Party Animal. This movie isn't Citizen Kane. It's not even the Citizen Kane of teenage sex comedies. That would be Private Resort. Or maybe Mischief. Last American Virgin, final answer. Anyway, the stellar soundtrack on this film is a who's who of indie music at the time. You've got bands like The Convertibles, The Untouchables, the UK punk's Chelsea, Two Killer Songs by The Flesh Tones, Radio Free Europe by R.E.M., and four, count them, four songs by The Buzzcocks. Today's episode is going to focus on Buzzcocks' classic era. That's roughly 1977 through 1981. If you're looking for a more inclusive discography and you want every single song covered, you might have to do that yourself. So please join me as I take a trip through the classic era of Buzzcocks. I'm going to watch this tonight. Before I begin, I just want to thank my latest patron. Thank you, Damon. Welcome aboard. I really appreciate the support, and I can't thank you enough. If you enjoy the bands I'm bringing you, and you would like to support the show, please consider joining my Patreon. It is at patreon.com forward slash popculturegraveyard. And thanks. This episode is dedicated to the late, great Pete Shelley, one of the greatest songwriters that England ever produced. Not a question, a statement. The first incarnation of Buzzcocks that mattered featured Howard DeVoto on lead vocals, Pete Shelley on guitar, Steve Diggle on bass, and young John Marr on drums. Something to remember about Buzzcocks, they were a little bit older than most punks on the scene, having already gone to university, except for their amazing drummer, John Marr, who was only like 15 or 16 when he joined the band. So although they were influenced by the Sex Pistols, this band was just a little more savvy than most punk bands at the time. In January 1977, Buzzcocks release, Spiral Scratch. This was an EP with four tracks on it, Breakdown, Time's Up, Boredom, and Friends of Mine. Released on the band's own New Hormones label, in my humble opinion, this is a much more important release than the Sex Pistols' full-length Nevermind the Bollocks album, because this EP proved to bands everywhere that they could put out their own material, start their own label, distribute their own music, without anyone else trying to censor it. The CP was produced by the studio genius Martin Hannett, who is credited here as Martin Zero. He's best known for his masterful work with Joy Division. There is an unfinished quality to these songs that is just perfect. It's a gritty, stripped down and raw EP. And it's those qualities that I believe are the reasons why the EP still holds up well today. Boredom is my favorite track here, and I feel it's a punk statement as timeless as the Ramones' I Don't Care. As a statement, it's an anti-statement, which was perfect for the punk movement at the time. The chorus to Boredom is simplicity itself. You know me, I'm acting dumb. You know the scene, very humdrum. Boredom, boredom, ba dum ba dum It's that rarest of dumb punk songs in that it admits in the lyrics it's a dumb punk song. The songs break down and time's up. Also are songs underneath the collective umbrella of boredom. Friends of mine, according to Howard DeVoto, is simply throwaway nursery rhyme nonsense about some real and imagined people. Basically verbal packaging for Pete's guitar solo. Speaking of guitar solos, boredom has a kind of musical joke built into the song, as the guitar solo is simply two notes repeated over and over and over, as if being played by a very bored guitarist. By the way, if you're intrigued by early Buzzcock stuff, I implore you to check out Time's Up. It is packed with all of the early stuff the band recorded around the era of Spiral Scratch. So you get those four tracks, as well as other things such as their cover of the Trogs, I Can't Control Myself, early takes of Orgasm Addict and Love Battery with Howard on vocals, and it even has footage from their first ever gig at Lesser Free Trade Hall in Manchester in July of 76. 
killer collection. The overall feeling of Spiral Scratch, though, is that it's a different band entirely than the band we all know and love as Buzzcocks. Devoto's ragged vocals are matched by ragged instrumentation. Honestly, outside of John Marr's crisp and energetic drumming and the occasional nasal backing vocal from Pete Shelley, there's not much here to hint at what Buzzcocks would later become. Right before Spiral Scratch was about to be released, Howard DeVoto left the band. Ironically enough, he was bored with the direction that the band were going in, aka sounding more accessible, and he went on to found the band Magazine. An amazing band in their own right. Yes, they will be in a future episode. With Howard gone, Pete Shelley switched to lead vocals, Steve Diggle switched to second guitar, and they got in a new bass player, Garth, and in November of 1977, Buzzcocks released Orgasm Addict, the B-side of which was the song Whatever Happened To. This single was produced by Martin Rushent, another Martin who knows his way around the studio, and Martin Rushent would go on to produce almost all of the Buzzcocks' wonderful work. Orgasm Addict is a brilliant song that mixes sex with humor, as the song's titular subject is always at it, and was predictably banned from radio airplay. My favorite lyrics happen in the bridge, where Pete sings, You're making out with school kids, winos, and heads of state. You've even made it with the lady who puts the little plastic robins on the Christmas cakes. Incidentally, this is the only single by Buzzcocks to have Garth on bass. Garth was an underrated bass player, especially live, and he was very skilled at playing off of Pete and Steve. However, he was a bit too much of a party animal so the band wound up sacking him. The band got pretty boy Steve Garvey in on bass. By the way, the band nicknamed Steve Garvey Patty because Steve Diggle already had divs on the name Steve. And the first single recorded with their new bass player was What Do I Get? Backed with Oh Shit. Steve might not have been as inventive a bass player as Garth, but he always came up with perfect bass lines, played beautifully. What Do I Get is a brilliant song about a guy who's simply looking for love and in return gets no love, no sleep at night, nothing that's nice, nothing at all. And the song's got a lovely sweet surprise at the end with the line, nothing at all because I don't get you. It's little touches like that that truly separate Pete Shelley's songwriting from the pack. There's not many bands, by the way, where the creative leading light can simply leave and another member of that band can take over on vocals and have the band actually get better. Devoto was a great frontman, but as a frontman for the Buzzcocks, Pete Shelley is unassailable. In March of 1978, the band released Another Music in a Different Kitchen. This is a ridiculously great album, and it is absolutely packed with classic songs. Fast Cars is a brilliant song with one of the best bass lines the band ever came up with, and it's got lyrics Ralph Nader would love. I hate fast cars. Unsafe at any speed. No Reply is the kind of unrequited love song that Pete excelled at. You Tear Me Up was written by Pete and Howard DeVoto. It's about being in an abusive relationship, and the guitar is as raw and gritty as the lyrics. Get On Our Own is Pete's Wouldn't It Be Nice. It features a wonderfully unique vocal from him, where he's practically yodeling on the chorus. Love Battery, the old Pete and Howard song, equates sex with electricity, summed up in the line, I got this crazy current, gets into my underwear, and when it really connects, I come and go everywhere. Again, unsafe at any speed. Sixteen is a nostalgic slice of angst about returning to that titular age, a time before you became bored and jaded with everything, back when things like dancing, music, and kissing were exciting. I've always loved the guitar on this. It seems to be playing almost in waltz time, and it's really hypnotizing. The next track, I Don't Mind, is one of Pete Shelley's most lyrically brilliant songs that finds someone in a relationship that they feel unworthy of. And aside from being clever, the lyrics themselves are like verbal gymnastics. I'm lost without a clue, so how can I undo the tangle of these webs I keep weaving? I don't know if I should be believing, deceptive perceiving, but if you don't mind, I don't mind. My favorite lines, though, are in the bridge. I even think you hate me when you call me on the phone. And sometimes when we go out, then I wish I'd stayed at home. And when I'm dreaming or just lying in my bed, I think you've got it in for me. Is it all in my head? Is it in my head? What a deft songwriting touch. So conversational, so off the cuff, and such universal feelings. Brilliant. This brings us to fiction romance, 
which for years was my all-time favorite Buzzcocks song. That opening chugging guitar line was all I ever wanted. All I ever needed. And Pete's vocals are so gorgeously disaffected. The lyrics speak to someone who is upset that the love that he witnesses in magazine pages and in his dreams can never truly be his in reality. And he's experiencing all these new feelings. And on the page, he's passionate about it. But the vocal performance is almost apathetic and cold, as if he's resigned to that fate. But by the end of the song, it seems that the fiction romance has become reality. Such a great song. The next song, Autonomy, is Steve Diggle's Ode to Independence. Autonomy has some of my favorite guitar riffs. Songwriting-wise, Steve personifies the title word autonomy. So when he sings, I want you, autonomy, it will sound even to the most casual Buzzcocks fan as I want you on top of me, which some would argue is a better lyric. I Need is a cleverly succinct song about all of the things that the song's subject cannot do without, including sex, love, drink, drugs, food, and cash. Album Ender, Moving Away from the Pulse Beat, is one of those tracks that remind us Buzzcocks were blessed with one of the greatest drummers inside and outside of the punk scene. John Marr absolutely murders this track. Rock solid drumming, yet with a lot of soul. Lyrically, the song is a love song, but it's uncertain exactly how much love is felt there, or if the song's subject is left alive at all. But the album doesn't really end here. In fact, one could argue it doesn't end at all. There's a final musical interlude that recalls the track Fast Cars and eventually devolves into a locked groove to keep the LP's final notes in a sort of suspended animation. For that reason alone, I highly recommend tracking down the UK pressing. This is an absolutely stellar debut album, and I highly recommend it to anyone who's even the least bit curious about Buzzcocks. In September of 1978, Buzzcocks release Love Bites. This is an adorable album cover. This is their pinup look with those two handsome bookends. Pete and Steve can't help but look 10 times prettier by association. Incidentally, this is the UK pressing. You can tell by the raised lettering of Buzzcocks above the picture. The album title is very clever because it can be taken two ways. Love bites, as in hickeys on the neck, or simply as love bites a sort of ill judgment passed on love itself. But whichever way you take it, this album is excellent. The opening song, Real World, is so earnest and plain spoken that on the page, the lyrics read a lot like a Jonathan Richmond song. You tell me. I'm in love with the real world. It's mutual or so it seems. Cause only in the real world do things happen like they do in my dreams. Who else is doing Jonathan Richmond? Come on. The opening guitar riff is also very sexy, and it sets just the right tone for this album. Up next is the classic, Ever Fallen in Love. And although I've played this song hundreds of times, it seems I'm never prepared for the force with which the song's opening jumps out of the speakers. In perhaps the band's most timeless and relatable song, Pete Shelley conveys the kind of sentiment upon which Ray Davies built an entire career, chronicling the emotions of someone on the wrong end of a relationship. Ever Fallen in Love's lyrics offer a clinic on songwriting. You spurn my natural emotions. You make me feel I'm dirt and I'm hurt. And if I start a commotion, I'll only end up losing you, and that's worse. The original opening line was, you piss on my natural emotions. But after the experience of Orgasm Addict being banned from radio play, Pete wasn't taking any chances and changed Piss On to Spurn. For one of the greatest pop-punk anthems ever, it may surprise you that Pete got his idea for the song from a line in the Frank Sinatra movie version of the musical Guys and Dolls. Pete happened to catch it on TV in November of 77, and Sinatra's gangster character's girlfriend literally says the words, have you ever fallen in love with someone you shouldn't have? Pete wrote the entire song almost fully formed the next day. It's another case of how a songwriter's best songs usually come the easiest. It was the idea of the band's brilliant producer, Martin Rushent, to have backing vocals on the chorus. And that's actually Martin himself singing the high-pitched backing vocal on the chorus. And then, seemingly, almost after it's just begun, the song ends, leaving you wanting more. Ever Fallen in Love is probably the Buzzcocks' greatest song. It's definitely their best known. The band Fine Young Cannibals did a laid-back cover version for the Jonathan Demme film Something Wild, and their slower, toothless version 
peaked at number 9 on the charts. The next song, Operator's Manual, has the kind of cold, disconnected lyrics any post-punk band would envy. And it reads on the page like a Gary Newman track. Don't do Gary Newman. They get one impression per show. Operator's Manual tells me what to do when emotions blow a fuse, indicating blue. At its core, this song is about wishing your heart came with a user's manual that allowed you to troubleshoot all the emotional problems that a relationship brings. The next track, Nostalgia, has some of my favorite music on the album, with bass player Steve Garvey's lively playing especially distinguishing itself. And it's got Pete's best lead guitar work on this LP. And the lyrics, ah, nostalgia for an age yet to come. The song's subject cannot wait to get to that point in the future where all of this indecision and worry about a relationship is in the past. So he's nostalgic for an age yet to come. Next level songwriting. Side two, track one, the power slot, goes to walking distance. And it has a big rock and roll opening, which you'll keep expecting to launch into a powerful verse that never comes. As an instrumental though, it's one of Buzzcock's most anthemic. That's followed by Love Is Lies, Steve Diggle's anti-love song. Full disclosure, I am not really a fan of this song. But as with everything Buzzcocks, there are good things in it. Although I feel the song is let down by a rather pedestrian chorus, it has got some very nice verses. And the acoustic track is a very nice change of pace musically on the LP. The next track, Nothing Left, is a stone cold classic with super heavy guitar and solid drumming with lines like, did you love me? I like to think so. It's another Pete Shelley gem. Pete's charming, at all, at all, at all, at all, at all, sums up what's great about his vocals. He could sing the phone book and he'd sound adorable. It's one of the most rhythmic driving tracks on the LP. Nothing Left's lyrics deal with the fallout of a breakup and the lyrics are classic. I've lost a lover and I'm certain I'll find another. So why am I hurting? Cause I've got nothing left at all. The next song, the lesser known ESP, is one of the best tracks Pete Shelley ever wrote. First of all, the guitar line that plays through the entire track is pitch perfect. Secondly, the verses all explain that the song's subject is trying to transmit his feelings to someone, and he's really hoping they have ESP, because if they don't, he doesn't know what he's gonna do. Just a really offbeat song by Buzzcocks, yet it still can't help but come across as a love song. The album ender, the relentless Late for the Train, is for my money the best instrumental Buzzcox ever recorded, and another fantastic showcase for John Marr's drumming. John Marr, by the way, is the reason that Johnny Marr from the Smiths changed his name with a different spelling, because Manchester could only have one John Marr, and he drummed for the Buzzcox. Anyway, Late for the Train is a great end to this album, and it's one of the best ending tracks ever. Released in September of 1979, A Different Kind of Tension. This might just be my favorite Buzzcox album, but take that with a grain of salt, because my favorite Buzzcox album changes from week to week. Album opener, Paradise, is one of my favorite Buzzcox songs, and one of their lesser known gems. You know what? I'm gonna put my all-time favorite Buzzcox songs in the description below, so be sure to click on Show More below and check those out. This song to me seems to be making a joke of the dangerous punk scene that the band was a part of, with lines like, cause a knife fight on Saturday night is the only kind of justice. Not nice, but it's the only kind that's given here in paradise. I also love the line, why are you wasting my time with questions when everything's fine? Pete Shelley is one of my favorite lyricists ever. You can keep Lord Byron. Just give me Shelley. Great song. Sitting Round at Home is my favorite Steve Diggle song ever, and one of the greatest he ever wrote. I first encountered the song through a cover by NYC hardcore kingpins Gorilla Biscuits, and I fell in love with it. And you can immediately hear why it appealed to a hardcore band. And knowing the Gorilla Biscuits version first, I had assumed that Gorilla Biscuits really beefed up the guitar and sped it up. So I was overjoyed when I heard the original, and it is just as hard and mean and fast. The song alternates between slower, menacing riffs and balls-to-the-wall double-time explosiveness, as Steve documents the boredom of sitting at home staring at the TV. You Say You Don't Love Me is another Sweet Pete unrequited love song with gorgeous lyrics that include the wonderful lines, You Say You Don't Love Me? Well, that's all right with me, because I'm in love with you. 
And I wouldn't want you doing things you don't want to do. You think it's easy writing lyrics that great? Give it a shot. Steve Diggle's You Know You Can't Help It is a slight yet fun song with a powerful bridge. This segues into another Steve song, Mad Mad Judy, which has a cool guitar part, but other than that, the song is a basic rave up any number of punk bands could have done. The next track, Raison d'Etre, is one of my all-time favorite Buzzcock songs. You see why this is a fave. Pete was writing at such a high level at that time, churning out masterpieces that casual Buzzcocks fans don't even know, and lots of them are on this album. Raison d'Etre features a gloriously sloppy and simple guitar solo that just works. I don't know what to do with my life kicks off side two as Pete opines, I don't know what's gone wrong with my life, but you know I never do seem to win. Whenever I think I've straightened it out, it becomes a vicious circle again. This track also features explosive drumming from John Marr. John Marr is my favorite punk drummer. Yeah, you may be right, but I don't want to hang out with Chuck Biscuits. You try being in a van with him. Money is an oblique post-punk song with dynamic drumming, droning guitars, and really cryptic lyrics about how life is a zoo. Hollow Inside pairs the best bass line on the entire album with a very cool guitar figure. Title track, A Different Kind of Tension, is a paranoid, off-kilter, maddening track that will hammer you into submission. The track, I believe, is Pete's Bob Dylan moment. With more verses than any other Buzzcock song and a repeating chorus, there is no love in this world anymore. He must sing it a hundred times in the course of the song, straining with more and more power each time he screams it. Really cool track. My favorite line in the song, though, when I poison my system, I take thoughts and twist them into shape. I'm reaching my nadir and I haven't an idea of what to do. I'm painting by numbers but can't find the colors to fill you in. I'm not even knowing if I'm coming or going, if to end or begin. I mean, and he does it on the regular. Pete Shelley, ladies and gentlemen. The album ends with Radio 9, a staticky sound experiment that plays short snatches of single releases, Everybody's Happy Nowadays, and Why Can't I Touch It? It's a weird yet fitting way to end this album. Paradise, Sitting Round at Home, Raison d'Etre, Money, Hollow Inside, I Believe. One hell of an album. As I said, this could be my favorite. So nice, I bought it twice. In September of 1979, the band released Singles Going Steady. This was a compilation specifically put together for U.S. release before an American tour. How can I put this without using any hyperbole? This is the greatest compilation in the history of punk music. Change my mind. Side one of this album features all the A-sides of single releases in chronological order, with side two housing all those singles corresponding B-sides. It's a perfectly ordered package, and it's a genius idea. Some people lament the fact that the Buzzcocks don't have the quintessential classic album, such as The Clash, London Calling, or Nevermind the Bollocks, Here's the Sex Pistols, or Damned, Damned, Damned. But here it is, and it doesn't matter how it was put together. There are only a few songs on here that were actually on their albums. The rest are all non-album singles, and it is a killer collection of songs. I could have done an episode just on this release alone. And maybe I will. And for vinyl enthusiasts, I just want to let you know, the original pressings are the best. The originals that sound the best have dead wax that says a Porky Prime cut, which was the trademark of engineer George Peckham, who made outrageously great sounding records. Trust me, you are never going to want to run out of this pressing. Some of the singles I didn't already cover include Everybody's Happy Nowadays, one of my favorite Buzzcock songs. Musically, the track is stunning. Again and again, the drumming of John Marr is just overwhelmingly great. He lays down such a solid foundation over which the two guitars play different parts, and then they come together and sync up during the chorus. Mwah! It's perfect. Pete was inspired by Aldous Huxley's Brave New World, which features a society totally devoid of culture and art. And much like with Guys and Dolls, a character in the book literally says the words, everybody's happy nowadays. The song's subject is almost delivering a commercial for this new way of thinking, and the bliss that the character experiences when nothing is real. Love You More is about a girl that Shelley was dating who worked in Woolworths and Bolton, and it's a very simple, straight-up love song. Harmony in My Head is my pick for Steve Diggle's best song ever. Sitting Round at Home is my favorite, but this is his greatest song. Released as a single in July of 1979, 
Harmony in My Head reached number 32 in the UK charts, and it's perhaps Steve's best known song. Steve sings it with a gravelly voice, but the chorus is sugar sweet, which is a very nice juxtaposition. The song is a non-linear narrative about alienation, with the harmony in his head being the sound of the crowd in the streets. The message in the song is to connect and embrace life, both the good and the bad. The track Noise and Noise has one of my all-time favorite guitar solos, during which a second guitar joins in, and then they go different ways again. I love the guitar interplay between Steve and Pete. So damn tasty. The entire band are credited on Why Can't I Touch It, and that was the first song that made me fall in love with Buzzcocks when I heard it in the movie Party Animal. Funky as hell. And funky isn't a word that you would associate with Buzzcocks. Why Can't I Touch It is a tour de force for the rhythm section. They are in a locked groove that the guitars jump in and out of. But make no mistake, Steve Garvey and John Marr are holding it down. And the lyrics are as cryptic and wonderful as the music. Well, it seems so real I can see it. And it seems so real I can feel it. And it seems so real I can taste it. And it seems so real I can hear it. So why? Can't I touch it? A lot of Pete's lyrics deal with reality and what is and isn't real, and this comfortably falls into that category. The music, however, is credited to every member of the band, and you can easily hear that this song began with the rhythm section. Just Lust, Lipstick, Something's Gone Wrong Again, this is a heavy hitter of an album. If you get only one record by Buzzcocks, make it singles going steady. It will adequately set the hook and either make you a lifelong fan of this album alone or force you to seek out all their other albums. But don't sleep on this. In February 1981, the band released One, Two, Three. This has wonderful album design. One, two, three. This is a six song EP. And what's cool about this is side A has three songs by Pete Shelley and side B has three songs by Steve Diggle. The real winner on this EP is Pete's song, Are Everything. Your looks, my charm, my own imagination. My loves, your hates, your own infatuation are everything. It is a slow, repetitive, circular song. The song almost reminds me a little bit of Why Can't I Touch It? The song's repetitiveness doesn't ever get old because it sounds so damn good. Strange Thing and What Do You Know are two other great songs on here. Out of these Steve Diggle songs, I really like Why She's a Girl from the Chain Store. This EP signaled the end of the classic era of Buzzcocks. Following the band's breakup, Pete Shelley would go on to solo success with the album Homo Sapien, the title track of which was an excellent single that is still one of my favorite songs of the 80s. He put out another album that I really like called the XL1. It's got a killer track on it called Telephone Operator. So if you're curious for Pete Shelley stuff, check out the tracks Homo Sapien and Telephone Operator. After Buzzcocks, Steve Diggle formed Flag of Convenience. And Steve put out a lot of great solo stuff after Buzzcocks ended. My favorite solo track by Steve is Six City Sometimes. So check out that track if you want to really hear what Steve was up to post-Buzzcocks. I liked some of the other things the band put out after the classic era. Trade Test Transmissions was a great album. But from their later work, I much prefer Flat Pack Philosophy. Check out the songs Wish I Never Loved You, sort of a sister song to Ever Fallen In Love, and the song Credit. Those are two that I really like off that album. If you want a really great overview of Buzzcocks music, there's a lot of ways you can go. The original way I went was the Roar cassette on Reach Out International Records. For those of you with still operational cassette decks, this is a fantastic comp. If you're looking for CD alternatives, I highly recommend Product. This is 61 songs on three compact discs. You get all the studio stuff, a booklet, their final singles, and even a 24 minute unreleased concert. So if you see this, jump. And finally, Operator's Manual. This is a tremendous 2LP set, and it's got a really nice cross-section of well-loved singles and more obscure stuff. So if you already have singles going steady and want to explore a little further, I highly recommend Operator's Manual. Steve is still out there doing it with the Buzz Knots. That's unfair. Steve is still out there with a version of the Buzzcocks. I especially like it when he has rotating singers with him. But if you go to see Buzzcocks to this day, you will see a good show. I hope you enjoyed this journey through Buzzcocks music. If you did, please do me a favor and hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you next week with a lot more cool stuff.